guys, GalvaCam23 back again with a video and today it's going to be my Blu-ray and DVD update for the first half of January 2013. Uh, quite, a lot of, quite a lot of stuff to show you. I was wondering whether to do it in two parts but um, I think I'll do it one if I can get through it quick enough. Uh, do DVDs first. Uh, first up is um, one of the funniest comedians of all time, George Carlin, the best of. Uh, George Collins. The only reason I uh, didn't get kind of a big, big box set of his was that they haven't kind of obviously kind of the, kind of a, a compilation would be the best kind of best way to start. So I've seen like clips on YouTube, but nothing kind of more than that. So I'll definitely check this out. Uh, so is a uh, a double pack of absolutely classic Christmas films or classic films um, is uh, Home Alone and Home Alone Two. Now I do know that there's the um, German um, uh, Blu-ray of the two, but probably be too expensive. So I got this for five pounds from Mor from Morrison's. The only thing I don't particularly like about it is the um, fact that the slip cover is completely different to the actual cover. Which I thought is kind of strange. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Home Alone. You can't go wrong with those those two films. Obviously, they do other other two are absolute shite, but. Anyway, uh, next up is a pound shop pickup. It is a uh, faint heart. Now I know nothing about this film apart from the fact that um, it's about um, battle reenactments. I think it's about this guy whose wife is leaving him or something. I'm not sure. Um, as I've heard of it, but I've never seen anything about it. But um, I'm a big fan of uh, Eddie Marson, so I'll be good to check out. Uh, next up are a couple. Oh, I'll show these both. A couple of classic. Um, uh, Muppet movies. Well, one of them is an absolute classic, and one is kind of a personal classic for me. It is Muppets from Space and Elmo in Grouchland. I remember the first when we first got um, uh, Sky. For the first month, you could get um, Sky movies for you know for like a for free for like a taste or what have you. I remember getting up at like six o'clock in the morning to watch this. And it's just got great, um, just great. Um, you know, memories of this. And then Muppets from Space. Muppets from Space. Uh, again, I mean, you can, who doesn't like the Muppets, honestly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't think of what to say about them. Um, next up is uh, mean, uh, mean Machine, starring um, Vinnie Jones. I believe this is a remake. I'm not sure who. Yeah, oh, yeah, long, yeah based on Longest Yard. Of which they did another remake of, so well, whatever. Um, yeah, starring Vinnie Jones, like I said. Uh, one of my personal favourite actors, uh, David Kelly, who uh, died I think, a few months, a uh, couple of months ago now. Also, David Hemmings and uh, Danny Dyer. And so we have um, a film that I do um, actually uh, own on Blu-ray already. But um, I saw it in Morrison's for two pounds, so I thought I might as well pick it up with it. the uh, newer slipcover. Is Born Ultimatum. Um, remember this was the first Bourne film, the, well the only, yeah, the first Bourne film I saw in the cinema, I really enjoyed it. So, uh, going to have it on Blu-ray already, but it's good to have it on DVD as well. Quite a nice slip cover, same as the, uh, same as I've got some good extras as well, uh, you know, making of, kind of like, direct commentary, deleted scenes, kind of like, five featurettes, that's good. And next up is a, um, well, Stuart Lee's comedy vehicle, which was kind of a, Kind of each episode had a theme, and it had Stuart Lee doing stand up, and um, kind of had um, sketches as uh, like wraparounds. Uh, I mean, Stuart Lee's an amazing, amazing comedian, really funny. He has uh, kind of a different sense of humour to all the other comedians that are kind of running about. It's kind of taking the piss out of other people, which I thought was, which I thought was really good. Uh, I remember seeing kind of I've seen clips of this on the like YouTube when it's been on television, but I've never seen the whole episode. And I uh, got this from my sister for my birthday. Um, so yeah, I'll check that out soon, I think. Uh, next up is an absolutely amazing... I watched this uh, this whole thing within like within a day, more or less. Uh, it's a, um, a drama set in the early 80s. And it kind of... It follows a group of, pe a group of um, guys who are unemployed. Who kind of have benefits, but also kind of, kind of work on the sly as well. And kind of each episode follows uh, follows one person. It's absolutely amazing stuff. Really kind of heartfelt. Um, and of course, the writer kind of went went used to uh, go through this in um, 
kind of mid 70s I think it was this is set in the early 80s it is uh, Boys from the Black Stuff again Alan Bleasdale could possibly be the best British drama writer of all time it's absolutely amazing this and I honestly didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I did but it's really it's really just like I said heartfelt and kind of true to life um, obviously I wasn't um, alive in the early 80s so I can't really don't know how much of it is based in reality but again really good if you're a fan of um, British um, British drama you really should check this out it's really good uh, next up is two DVDs of uh, Shooting Stars that is yeah 2000 this is what this was the first well it was in 2009 but it was I believe the first series since the old series finished so it was from uh, kind of a few months after that finished and uh, also 2010 series which was obviously the year after this one Man, I love Shooting Stars I, I, I mean these series are good but I kind of preferred it um, kind of the old series because it was I don't know just kind of funnier really uh, the thing I find with Vic and Bob which I really like is different people find different things funny with them like I would laugh at things that my brother or my mum wouldn't laugh at and I, I wouldn't laugh at things that other people would laugh at which I thought I think is really good uh, so yeah in stars 2009 and 2010 and our last DVD is uh, well it's technically a box set I'm not quite sure but anyway it is a season 2 of Flight of the Concords now this is an absolutely genius show one of my favourite HBO probably my, f no, my s probably second favourite HBO comedy I just think it's hilarious the kind of you know the deadpan humour that uh, obviously if you know if you've seen Flight of the Concords you know what kind of comedy it is but again really funny uh, I think I do prefer um, season season one though because this kind of, from what I remember, it wasn't kind of any really standout episodes. But again, Murray Hewitt, uh, is it Murray Hewitt? No, that's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, Murray Hewitt, is it? I think yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, played by Reese Darby, the brilliant uh, comedy character, one of my favourites. Uh, yeah, that's season two of Flight of the Concords. I have uh, season um, season one already, so I've got to pick it up. And also, I've got this in the um, uh, Blue Cross sale at HMV. We all know what's happened with that. And this was about, I think, about seven fifty. I think it was. It was worth with the uh, discount, so that's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that's all my DVDs. I'll um, just. You can probably actually see most of my, <laughs> my Blu-rays behind me, so I'll kind of, I'll cut and then I'll come back with the Blu-rays, so I'll see you in a second. Hey, okay, back again, uh, with the, this time with Blu-rays. Uh, I'll show you my box sets first. Um, oh, sorry, I'll take this off. Just give me one second, there we are. Uh, first up is the, uh, the it's one of my favourite sets now. It is Lord of the Rings, the, um, the trilogy on Blu-ray, the uh, theatrical versions. Again, oh, I just love this box set, it's all kind of, uh, is it embossed? Yeah, embossed I think, really nice, actually, like a nice hard case which I think is really good. I, mean, I, have to, I was kind of worried that I'd get um, the, you know, the, the Amore case with the three discs in, I was kind of worried about, but I'm really glad I got this. Um, there's a uh, data card there, but it kind of is coming off anyway, so I've sod it. Uh, Again, I haven't watched these yet, but obviously you're going to have to <laughs> kind of put aside like a whole day to watch all of them. Um, yeah, I, I do plan on getting the um, the you know the extended box set, but I'm not in any kind of big hurry. I was actually going to buy it from H and V. I had the um, the twenty percent code for pre-ordering the Skyfall Steelbook, but obviously that's not going to come through now. I was going to get the box set, which would have been uh, forty quid, which is still cheaper than some places. Um, but now I can't, so again, sod it. Uh, again, I just love this set. This I think when I get the extended set, probably that'll be my favourite set. But at the moment, it's this. Just absolutely love it. And this was a box set that I picked up from HMV um, in the twenty-five percent off Blue Cross sale. And it was eighteen pounds originally, but I paid well over twenty percent of a. Of 18 pounds is on shit at maths. Uh, yeah, this is a screen box set. Nice box set. This I do have the um, the DVD box set, but it's the one that kind of folds out. It has uh, three films in 
like each film is like in one of those thin cases, which I don't particularly like. So I think I'll sell that, I think. Uh, this one, nice set, this. Uh, the rules there, don't answer the phone, don't open the door, uh, don't try to escape. Again, just classic horror films. So I still remember the first time I saw um, Scream 1, and I could not sleep for weeks afterwards. And then when uh, Scream 2, I was always, and still kind of am, afraid of the um, the opening scene. It still freaks me out. Uh, they're in a uh, nice set, though. They're in separate um, separate cases. Uh, the um, I think more or less exactly the same as the DVDs with the extras and and such. But still good to have. And also, I've heard the transfers aren't brilliant, but I'll give it a go anyway. So screen two. And um, everyone's least favourite. Well, then with people's least favourite, screen three. But I still I, I, I still like every one of these films. Uh, obviously, the first two affected me more, but. Still really good. So that's the Scream Trilogy Blu-ray box set. The last box set I got for you is uh, films that uh, from a director that you wouldn't think would direct these kind of films is the Spy Kids uh, trilogy. Uh, again, this was eighteen pounds from H and V and the twenty twenty-five percent off uh, Blue Cross sale. Um, again, I just kind of I don't know guilty pleasures or just pleasures I don't know of uh, of mine. Uh, Kind of disappointed that the uh, first one doesn't have any extras on, where the whereas the uh, one from America has loads on. Uh, sorry, I'll show that again. Again, just kind of guilty, guilty pleasure films of mine. I still remember in uh, in 2006 I had my uh, appendix out, and I still remember watching uh, Spy Kids 2 on the, one of those. Um, you know, you get like your um, personal television, what have you. I remember watching it on that. That's a weird memory, I'm not sure, quite sure why. Again, a lot of good features on here. Again, you can't really see that, but anyway. Uh, I haven't seen these in quite a few years, actually. I, remember, I still remember seeing, going to see um, Spy Kids 3 in 3D, which is kind of probably my first 3D film, possibly. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, get, get your pleasures of mine. I just, I just like them. Uh, so, yeah, Spy Kids uh, trilogy. And I'll be back in one second with a regular Blu-rays. Now first up we have Brokeback Mountain. Again I got this in the 25% um, off HMV sale. Uh, absolutely amazing film this. Probably my favourite Ang Lee film. I haven't seen um, Sense and Sensibility or Pride and Prejudice, whichever, whichever one that is. Again it's an amazing film. Great cinematography, great great music, just great, great acting, just great everything. Um, I didn't actually um, realise that that the UK had this on Blu-ray uh, since about kind of last year sometime. But again, I just didn't really bother picking it up. But now I have. That's broke that mountain. Right, these next five are f that I got from the uh, five for thirty from HMV. Uh, first up is one actually surprise that was in the five for thirties because it's quite a new release. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Jonah Hill. I do like him, but I'm not kind of like a fanboy or whatever. Uh, but I've heard nothing but good things about this. I've seen it on kind of five pe different people's um, kind of best films of 2012 and most surprising films of 2012. Here's uh, 21 Jump Street, complete with a uh, slipcover. Again, I'm kind of surprised that this was in 5 for 30, because uh, I say it's, it's quite a new release. Just uh, one disc and... Uh, Digital copy code. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Jonah Hill, but I, I do tolerate him. Well, not tolerate him, but you know what I mean. Uh, I have to say, I've heard nothing but good things, so Tony Jump Street. Uh, let's do it, well, I'll show these both. It is uh, sorry, <coughs> Johnny English and Johnny English Reborn. Now, I've seen this on uh, telly a couple of times. It's not an amazing film, but it's quite funny. Uh, I still remember seeing the uh, teaser trailer in the cinema like, years and years ago. When was this? Uh, 2003. Just probably 2002. Uh, so yeah, uh, John English and the John English Reborn that I actually saw at the cinema. I thought we, I thought it was really was really funny. I like Dominic West in this. I thought it was really good. Um, again, Rowan Atkins is just a, a legend in British comedy. And uh, yes, it's uh, quite yeah. I mean, 2011, so that was, again, I'm shit at maths, eight years after the first one. 
So yeah, so I'll say I, I did enjoy it, so I'll go to check those out again. And next up is uh, the bio biopic of um, Ian Curtis. It is uh, Control. Uh, great film this, uh, shot in black and white, like I said, um, based on the life of Ian Curtis. Uh, of Joy Division, as if you didn't know already. Uh, again, really, really stylish. I like the fact that it's shot in black and white. Uh, great performances. I believe this was Sam Riley's first um, first film, I believe. I'm not quite sure, though. But again, really good. Also directed by um, Anton Corbine, who kind of directs quite a lot of uh, music videos. So that was quite interesting to see. Uh, so yeah, that's Control. And the last one in the 530 is uh, one again. That's Because um, usually when they have these offers on, they just they put in kind of the... The shitty bare bones release, but this is um, a two disc edition of the David Fincher film, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Again, it's been a while since I've seen this, but I do remember it being really, really good. And the funny thing is on the on the back of this, kind of all the credits are kind of overlapping on each other, which is kind of strange. But um, yeah, the first disc uh, co uh, contains com uh, commentary. And the second disc, uh, The Curious Birth of Benjamin Button, uh, 14 behind-the-scenes featurettes, uh, four photo galleries and uh, trailers and TV spots. Uh, next up is a film that is kind of based on a spin-off of um, The Thick of It, is, uh, In The Loop. Again, same kind of comedy, kind of comedy of errors, if you like, and a uh, misdirection. Again, really um, uh, good. I always uh, wondered kind of if I'd ever kind of ask Armando in each summit, it'd be what would it, be, what was, it, what, what is it like to uh, direct James Gandolfini? Because I was really surprised when I saw that he was in this film, because he's obviously a very big American actor. If you didn't know that already, uh, so yeah, I remember it being really funny. Uh, not as funny as uh, the TV show, but again, the TV show is one of my favourites of all time. So yeah, in a loop. Our next up is the uh, only Judd Apatow directed film that I haven't seen, well, apart from uh, This Is 40, but um, that isn't released in the UK yet. So, uh, yeah, there's a funny people. Uh, I think the story is uh, kind of a stand up comedian um, finds out he has cancer. Uh, again, that's kind of the extent of my knowledge of this film. But again, 40 year old version is one of my favourite comedies. Not Tut was pretty good as well, not, not one of my favourites. Um, yeah, but again, I'll, 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 I like anything, well, not anything with Judd Apatow, but I do like Judd Apatow, so uh, check this out soon, I think, plenty of people. And next up is a Blu-ray that I got for £2 from Morrison's, which I still can't believe. Uh, really good film, is a chat room, which is, I believe, the English language debut of uh, Hideo Nakata, who uh, directed The Ring. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I am right. Uh, it's about a... Uh, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of based in kind of an online chat room, but it is kind of as if these people actually meet up in real life, which at the end they actually do. Um, so yeah, really good film. Uh, Aaron Johnson's really uh, good performance in it, and also um, so Imogen, Imogen Poots, uh, Matthew Beard, Hannah Murray, and Daniel Kaluuya. Uh, I said I remember seeing this on. Um, film for about a year ago and I've quite enjoyed it. Again, it's not a uh, film that I'd see kind of over and over and over again, but it's a good watch. Anyway, two quid for a Blu-ray, you cannot complain at that. Uh, next up is uh, actually a new release for the beginning uh, for this week, it is a uh, Dread 3D. Uh, there have been kind of uh, problems about this because people have been complaining about about the uh, picture on the, um, the 2D version, which I can kind of see problems with it. Uh, sometimes it kind of goes blurry for a few seconds, and then it kind of goes sharper again, which is kind of, well, not dis it's not distracting at all, but you do kind of notice it. But again, really good film. Again, on um, kind of a lot of people's kind of best of 2012, most underrated films, most surprising films. Again, I love the fact that it's all set in one place. Well, the main story is set in one place. To so get that um, sense of. Um, sense of isolation and uh, yeah I think the one thing that I was A or surprised at and B maybe why it has problems with it is the fact that the 2D and the 3D version are on the same Blu-ray which I 
I'm not sure but it might kind of make some difference with the picture but again I could be talking about absolute bollocks uh, yeah great just balls to the wall kind of action with a bit of horror in there just great film so that's Dread 3D and next up is uh, again a Blu-ray I got from uh, HMV it is a, a Coraline 3D now I don't own a 3D TV but this contains the 3D and the 2D version as well again on the same disc I remember seeing this at cinema really enjoying it I think that kind of the main thing that I remember from it was the fact that um, I had a, a free ticket and I didn't realise that um, you can't get 3D films with a free ticket so I gave the ticket to the guy and said oh, what a um, ticket for Coraline 3D and again gave me a 2D one so I thought he made a mistake so I went back they had to explain to me that the free ticket one for a 3D film it's kind of kind of annoying me because I'm looking forward to seeing it in 3D again some kind of somewhere down the line I might get a 3D TV I never know uh, yeah really good film I mean stop motion is here to stay still or with this and uh, Paranorman from, the, from uh, 2012 yep still here I don't think it's going to go anywhere for quite some time. Get everybody loves everybody loves it. Well not everybody, can't generalise like that, but anyway. I really enjoy it. It's Coraline. Our next up is a film that was featured on my um, top twelve films of 2012 is um, Toby Jones in Barbarian Sound Studio. Again just great atmospheric kind of horror horror thriller drama again psychological horror and stuff. Again re sorry not the camera there. Uh, uh, amazing use of sound, as you would expect from a from a film called Blu-ray in the Sound Studio. Again, if you're a fan of kind of what I kind of uh, think of it is, think of it as is. Um, if David Lynch would have directed this, it would look kind of the same. Well, you know what I mean. A uh, great use of sound. It's scary as shit in some places. Uh, the ending is a kind of thing that polarizes most people, but I absolutely love it. Uh, if you're a fan of kind of uh, different horror movies, definitely check this out. It's really good. God, there's quite a big pile of massing next to me. Uh, next up is a, a thing that was from Blockbuster yeah, I did. Uh, it's uh, the Peter Mullen director film NEDS, which stands for Non-Educated Delinquents. This is set in... Oh, it's embarrassing. Scotland. Scotland, I think, yeah. In... Um, I think the 70s, oh this is embarrassing, this. I should know this really, but again, really good film. Uh, Pete Mullins an undirected, uh, undirected, underrated director, for, director in my opinion. He directed um, The Magdalene Sisters and uh, Orphans, which are both really good. Uh, so yeah, and next up is the last um, uh, regular Amore edition, is um, The Grinch, uh, or How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Again, uh, a lot of uh, memories about this. I saw this at cinema. Uh, really good. And of course, um, stars a very young Taylor Momsen, and you know what happened with her. And the next, and it uh, contains the Blu ray and uh, DVD. And otherwise, I've been reading um, the reviews on Blu ray.com, and they say that the transfer on the Blu ray is absolutely horrible. Uh, last one is, um, thank God, I bet you're thinking right. Um, is the uh, play.com exclusive steelbook of Lawless. I did an unboxing uh, of this on my channel. Uh, check it out if you want to, if you do. Um, yeah, really nice steelbook, one of my favorites is now. And I was looking on uh, the website last, I think two days ago, and I now know that, um, that this is uh, still available to order uh, from play.com for the same price. Uh, they do that sometimes, kind of with steelbooks, um, kind of sell out. Sometimes they put more on in the in you know the you know the next couple of days. So this is still available on Play.com if you want to get it. Again, one of my favourite steelbooks. This now, great artwork. So you can see that anyway. It is great artwork. Again, you can see other people's unboxings if you want a kind of a closer look. Yeah, it's also this was also featured on my fav uh, top twelve films of two thousand twelve. Again, I, I still I still think that um, Guy Pearce had the best villain role this year uh, last year. I really do. Just a horrible horrible person.
but uh, yeah, that's Lawless, and that, I believe, is it. And that is only the first half of January. Jesus Christ. Right, uh, yeah, I think that's basically it now. Uh, I think I'll put this in one part, because I don't think it's going to be too long. But if it is, I might stick it into two, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.